Okay, should we bring you the breaking news that we uh, teased everyone about, although Tom Clayton on the news kind of gave it away. But anyway, <laughs> never mind. Um, let's get straight to it because a former Premier League winger and winner, I should say, uh, joins us right now, and that is Nathan Dyer. Nathan, good morning to you. Good morning, how are you? Morning, Nathan. Very, very well. How are you? I'm sure it's a busy day for you today because you've made a huge announcement. Yeah, it's been um, it's been a bit crazy, actually. Um, but yeah, um, made the announcement today. The announcement that is that you are retiring from football. Tell us how you've come to this decision, Nathan. Um, it was um, to be fair, it was over a year now. I've been I've been I've had had it in my in my mind, you know, the thought of the next step, really. Um, and I think we've it made it a lot harder with COVID. Obviously, you know, everything being disrupted. Uh, my contract came to to an end um, and then it got extended because the season hadn't finished and it was a bit of a mess um, and I think I just had to look at you know um, my my shelf life and obviously my family as well. Did you have a, a bit of an empty feeling Nathan well you know when pre-season starts that there's you think like there's something missing? Um, do you know what I didn't no um, and I think that's that's the sign that I've made you know the right decision. Um, I think last season was 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 a bit of a struggle for me. Um, I managed to to still train at Swansea from the start of the season last season till January, but um, I was still actively looking for a club. Um, I did have a, a few offers, but again, it was it was it was hard with the you know obviously the relocation. You know how long the contract was was only until the end of the season. So yeah, it was a lot of things to to think about. I mean, you're only 33, Nathan. So yeah. there are there are a lot of people that will be thinking, "Hang on, you've still got go on." Parent. He was born a year after I signed for Arsenal. <laughs> Honestly, yeah. it's like oh my, how old? When I just looked at, I thought, "How old I am I?" I was going to say that's one way to make you feel a little <laughs> exactly. old. Exactly. But yeah, that's frightening. You're only 33, so you've got you know plenty of legs still in you, haven't you, to be playing? Yeah. Well, I mean, a lot of people have said that, and and yeah, I mean, I can still. I, I still think I can play now. You know, I still I did a to be fair, I did a few um few training programs with some of the boys um that were going back to preseason and you know I was completing them. But um I think just just the motivation to carry on um had started to go a little bit and I've always gave gave 110%. See, so I didn't know how to to go in and play football and not be me and give it my all. So yeah, 33. I mean, nowadays you got Jude Bellingham playing at the age of 12 so you know <laughs> you know it's uh, I think us older guys we're getting this getting shorter and shorter oh, that's not right that hope, but... how can you say 33 and you're old it's terrible isn't it <laughs> so Nathan take us back to a young Nathan Dye obviously he was apprentice yeah. at Southampton and I'm I'm a, a big advocate of young players going on loan and you went on loan a couple of times how much was that um, a massive uh, development in your career I was it was brilliant. Um, I think obviously back then, you know, I came through with at Southampton with um, Jamie Redknapp was there. Harry Redknapp um, was gave me my debut, and you know you got Dennis Wise. So I had proper old school, old school players then, and that's what you had to do. You had to fight, you know, and earn your stripe. So you, you know you couldn't just walk into the to the team. Um, you had to go on loan, prove your worth, and then come back and play. So, but it, you know, it helped me. It made me made me become the person I was, made me grow up a little bit more. Um, you know, I went on, on loan to Burnley. I made my debut actually at 17. Um, I scored in the Carling Cup, it was called then. Imagine that. Um, and, um, and, uh, Aging um, yourself you know, there, aren't you? Yeah, massively, massively. So, yeah, scored, got man of the match. And then, you know, I thought, yeah, that's me then, you know, I'll be in. And I read that, pulled me in and said, um, you know, I think you'll benefit on going out on loan. So it was a bit of a, you know, a knockback to my system, but, um, I did it, went to Burnley and, you know, I never looked back. And I think it's I think it's vital for a lot of players to do that, um, to get away from your comfort zone as well, mm -hmm. um, especially if you come through the youth system and, you know, you step out into to the big world, really. And I think what it is, it's actually going to play under pressure. You know, yeah. playing in academy games is all very well and good in under-18 games, under-23 games. But when you're mm -hmm. playing in a game, one with a crowd and two where play, other players' livelihoods depend on it, that mm -hmm. is completely different. Yeah, yeah, one million percent, and that's that, and that's the reason why it is good to go out and learn. You know, you've got too many players that you know either come through and don't have that pressure because they 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 feel at home, they know everybody. Um, you go in somewhere else where you know you've got you've got you know people there that that are dependent on you to to come and bring the goods. And also, you know, you're trying them. to take their position. Mm. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> also, yeah. 
I'm, I'm coming. Yeah, so they, I mean, they don't like you already. Yeah. Except with Thor, but at the same time, you know, you got you got to prove to the fans that you know the manager, and you got to you know obviously do well for the manager and um, prove that he was right to bring you in. So you know, you're right. Uh, it's an obvious one, Nathan. But I guess there was no better loan move that you that you made than when you went to Leicester in the 2015-16 yeah. <laughs> season. Um, what I want to ask you, though, before that, and and obviously that was the season that Leicester won the Premier League and you have your Premier League medal as a result of that. Um, yeah. Was there a point before you joined Leicester that you could have gone somewhere else and your, your sort of history could have gone a different way? Yeah, I mean, you know, I think probably that goes down as the best loan in history, doesn't it? Really? <laughs> it really does. Um, Good it, timing, it just, wasn't it, in your game? Oh, incredible. <laughs> you incredible. just had, me, think... you had an inkling, didn't you? Let's be honest. Yeah, I can't, yeah, I foresaw, foresaw the future, do you know what I mean? So, <laughs> but no, um, I think what happened is obviously at the time, you know, Gary Gary Monk was my manager and he kind of left me out of the squad, um, which I was, I was a bit shocked about. So... Um, I actively said to my agent, you know, um, David Manessa, and said, look, I need to get out and, and go and play football because that's what I want to do. I'd never understood players that could sit and 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 be in the sidelines. I wanted to be, you know, on that pitch. So, um, yeah, I had a few clubs, actually. It was when Bournemouth just came up. So there was them, you know, um, and, and a few others um, that I could have gone to. But uh, I didn't think that they were the right team for me at the time. Um, and then it was what was it, eight o'clock deadline day? Uh, my agents rang me and said, um, you know, what about Leicester? You know, they want they want you, Ranieri wants you. So I said, yeah. And it was a, just a rush to get up there for, for de- uh, you okay. know, deadline day. So is it 2-0 um, down? Was it against Villa? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Go on and yeah. change the game some. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think uh, Grealish called an absolute banger, to be fair. <laughs> and, um, and then, yeah, so I came, I was there. I was up there, came up there um, and then came on at half time, and it was just... It was, a, I don't know, it was a strange feeling. I just, I didn't feel myself as such. I just felt like a, an, another person, you know, like I had a, a point to prove. And, you know, uh, again, I don't, you know, I'm not throwing my head into places like that normally. So uh, um, <laughs> it was just one of those things. I don't even know why, why, why Riyad Mahrez picked me out <laughs> out of everyone either. So, um, but yeah, no, I just, I enjoyed it. Came on, um, obviously scored and, um, you know, we, we, that was our, that was a step then for us, you know, going on a good run. Tell me then, when you then went back to the Swansea training camp after that season had finished, did you walk in with your medal going, look at me, guys, look what I did. I went on my loan spell and it all proved quite successful for me. Yeah, I was singing that song. Does it chain hang? No, I um, <laughs> I was um. No, to be fair, I've, I I'm such a humble person. You know, it's been in the safe for for the longest time. I only brought it out a few times, and um, oh, you know, people yeah. people know, but I yeah, I don't know. I've always been a a, a person that just likes to to get on with things and um, never to to want to gloat um, or anything like that. So it was lovely, and if people ask me about it, I'll talk about it. But other than that, yeah. I wouldn't you know go and mention it. So. So you've got to have a, uh, a little bit of time to reflect. I don't know if you've done it already, because when mm. you're a younger player, you're learning your trade and you're, you know, you're learning different traits. When you're an older player, you think there's some things that I used to be able to do on the physical side. You can't. When do you think if you was at your peak? Because I, I think players have a three or four season peak. You don't know you've got your peak at that time, but then you look mm. back and think, whoa, I was, I was absolutely flying then. Yeah, that, was, that, that actually was when we won the, the, the League Cup. That was when I felt like I was, you know, you, just everything was clicking for me, um, like uh, physically, mentally, just knowing um, about football, um, you know, not just tactics, but just just the ins and outs of, you know, game management and stuff. Um, I think that was when I knew a lot about it. And then shortly after that was when, you know, I, I knew physically I couldn't do, you know, 50 sprints in a game. So I had to choose my moments to do it. I could still sprint past people and, and do what I needed to do but I just couldn't recover as quickly and keep doing it um as, as such so that's when Dan James came in and I just said look you do that and I'll um and I'll, and I'll just pick up the the pieces and boy can he sprint, um, <laughs> oh, can he sprint? <laughs> listen my team Brentford knew all about it in the uh, cup game one a couple of seasons ago believe me um <laughs> but what I wanted to ask you very quickly I know Swansea's very close to your heart you spent 11 years there so so they would yeah. be and I know you made the announcement through Swansea as well it's, a, it's been an interesting summer for them, hasn't it? With uh, Steve Cooper mm. leaving recently, um, they lost the the playoff final as well recently. What are you expecting from your them? Team, to your yeah, team. Yeah, I didn't want to mention that. <laughs> but why not? Yeah, well, so. shoehorned in. That's nah. what you're mentioning. Very I'm good. Sorry, I mean they happened to lose a playoff final. Um, no, but in all fairness, it's it's been a, an unusual summer for them, and a summer that's well ends up being a bit of upheaval for Swansea. 
Yeah, yeah, it has. It has. To be to be honest with you, it's been a strange one. Um, obviously, um, I know Steve Cooper had been, you know, linked with a few other jobs um, in the previous couple of months, um, and then I think to lose him just like that was 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 a bit of a shock to, to everyone's system. Um, and moving forward, you know, we've had a lot, had a lot of lone players last season, well, yeah. the previous two seasons, actually. Um, so once they left, you had Mark Gay, who was unbelievable, signed for Palace, you know, Freddie Woodman. You know, you've had a load of players come in and do well and obviously have moved on. Um, you had Andre Ayew, who has moved on as well. Um, so when you take those people out of the equation, you know, the, the club does, um, you know, struggle with, for players and, um, you know, I think it's just going to be a rebuilding situation for Swansea now. Yeah. Very, very quickly, Nathan, what's next for you then? What are you going to do? Um, I'm just, I'm just going to chill out and build Lego, I think. Now I'm oh, going to... Um... Nice. All right then, Nathan, what are you going to eat? Oh, what, what's, yeah, what, what, yeah, what do you think? Oh, do you know what? I can absolutely go for it Devour now. Devour this what, now. What's the one thing you think, yep, yeah, I can have some of that? Um, to be fair, I've been lucky enough to be able to do that anyways in moderation. But, oh, um, all the other footballers I, I, hate you already, even though... <laughs> yeah. <you're> <laughs> I um, you know what? I, I think I think a bit of French toast in the morning can't go oh, wrong. Oh, there you go. I'm I'm Jamaican as I'm Jamaican as well. So I think you know all of that, all of that um, that rice and peas and chicken is, is just gonna go down lovely for me. Oh, sounds delightful. But um, going for going for going forwards, I think I mean I touched on it when I was at an interview, you know, just just um before with the mental health side. Um, because I did struggle, which not many people know when I was at Leicester, um, because I, I got injured in that game that we spoke about and I couldn't play the next game, which I was meant to play. And then I struggled to then start a match. So I came on, you know, 15 or so times, but I never started. And moving away, my, my wife was pregnant with our second child. You know, the first one was, I think it was even one and a half. Um, it was, it was, it was really tough and difficult and you know I spoke to my agent and you know he flew down with Kieran Dyer no we're not related and um <laughs> and um and he just spoke to me on a level and kind of let me see the bigger picture because you can get so so trapped in a bubble mm. in football and realize and think that that's that is life that is it you know and, and it's not that it is so much more and you can't you know hold on to to, to things too too strongly otherwise you know it will it will um will get you Jim White and Simon Jordan, Monday to Thursday morning, 10 till 1, on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app, and on your smart speaker, TalkSport.